Hey folks, I'm so glad to be here. Uh, as you mentioned, my name is Katie Robb and I'm part of the education product marketing team. And I'm excited to join you today to share a bit more about what's new in education at Apple. Gave you a little sneak peek there. Um, so as you may know, Apple is really dedicated to providing the best tools to use in education from hardware to software and services. And I'm here today to talk a little bit about the software side of things. So we know that as you know, I was a former teacher and I know how important it is to use technology for teaching and learning, but I also know that when you've got 30 kiddos in the class and each of them has their own device, it can be really challenging to maximize your class time when you're checking to see if students have the right website open or are using the right apps for their projects, which is why we developed Classroom for Apple to enable educators to take full advantage of teaching with iPad and Mac while not losing that valuable instructional time. And so the Classroom app for iPad and Mac gives teachers an elegant and powerful tool for managing workflows like sharing and receiving documents, launching apps or websites, or even specific textbook pages. Um, we also make it really easy for teachers to see what students see with screen view and just a tap. And at the end of every class session, teachers get a class summary so that they can get an overview of which apps were used during class and for how long. Teachers can even help teach students reset their passwords and assign students to a specific shared iPad for a class period uh, directly from their teacher iPad or Mac. It's really amazing. And we've been really excited that Classroom has received an update this year. So the newest release features a beautiful new design that improves teachers' workflows. There's a new navigation that really help, helps teachers create, manage, and edit groups in fewer taps. There are these smart groups that I'll show you in a moment that make it even easier to see which students are online and which ones, which, which ones are using which apps, right? And then also, historically, Classroom has only worked with students who are in Bluetooth proximity to the teacher. But this past year has shown us we need teaching and learning to happen anywhere. And managing technology can be really challenging, especially in those scenarios. So this year, we're really, really proud to announce that Classroom will now support remote learning. We know there are a lot of reasons why students might need to join a class from home. And so whether you're in the classroom together with your students or they're learning from home or even a combination of both, Classroom will work at any distance. And so, Rather than just talk about it, I'd love to take this opportunity to show you um, Classroom in action. So uh, what you're seeing here is three iPad screens. You'll notice the big screen, and that is really for the teacher iPad that I'll be showing you. And then there are two student iPads. The top one with the blue background is a student who's going to join us remotely. And one um, below that is for the student who's joining locally. So we're kind of showing you a hybrid learning environment here, which we know can be one of the most tricky um, environments to navigate multiple tech devices. And so let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna go ahead and open the Classroom app for Apple on, on my teacher device. So I'm going to go ahead and select it from this uh, dock there. You'll notice that I already have classes in here, and that's because I'm signed in with my Manage Apple ID. So all of the classes that were synced to my school's student information system um, has shown up here. All of the students who are part of that class will show up there. If you happen to just be downloading the app from the App Store, which you can do um, and use right away, you'll have to start creating your own classes and ask students to join, which is totally fine. It's really easy to do. And when you're signed in with your Manage Apple ID, you can create classes as well. So I'm going to go ahead and show you how to do that now. I'm going to go ahead and select this blank card. When I do that, I can give the class a name. So let's go call it um, Homeroom. Maybe I got a Homeroom assigned to me. And then I can select a location and uh, personalize it a little bit with an icon and a color. I'm gonna go ahead and pick pink there and then tap done. So once I've tapped done there, you'll see that it's shown up here. Simple as that to create a class. Now, if I want to start a classroom session, all I have to do is select the class that I want to open. So let's go ahead and select Homeroom. When I do that, you'll notice the screen on the teacher device. Uh, you'll notice also that there are no students in this because I just created the class. So I'll need to add students. The way that I do that is tapping the three dots in the top right corner and then selecting add students. When I do, I see a list of all of the students available to me to add to this class. Um, again, because we're using Manage Apple IDs, all of the students in my location show up here. 
Um, if you're not using Manage App IDs, you'll have an invite code that you can send to students. So I can set, select students this way, or I can actually search for them by name, which is really great. Um, super easy. I'm gonna just add a couple more here and then tap add. So once I've done that, you'll see that these students are added here because they're using Manage Apple IDs. Right now, their devices are updating and saying, hey, you're a part of a new class, and they're adding that uh, now. So you'll see students start to join. But in the meantime, I'd love to share with you just the layout of what we're seeing here. Again, I mentioned that we have a beautiful new redesign that really takes advantage of design for iPad and that canvas. And so you'll see this sidebar navigation here um, where I'll see the class title as well as all of my students and which ones are on and offline. That's a really great way just to keep track of things. And as students are joining, you'll see now that they kind of light up in different colors here. Um, and then you'll notice that apps just showed up because I now have active students in my classroom and they all happen to be in their home screen. So if I wanna see all of the students who are on their home screen, all I have to do is select home screen to the right and you'll see all three here. Um, I can then go back to all students again. We also know that in a large group setting, teachers love running stations and they love um, working in like small groups, right? So making sure that students are really personalizing their instruction and working in different groups and doing different things. And so we can enable that in classroom as well. All I have to do is create a new group. If I select new group in the bottom right of this sidebar navigation, I just give this group a name. So let's go ahead and call this math. I have some kiddos in my homeroom working on math and tap okay. Once I've done that, I can just select a couple of students that I'd like to be in that class and tap done. And it's as simple as that. So now I can use this small group to navigate just that subset to different things and we'll show you how that works. I'm gonna just do this one more time so you can get a sense for what that looks like. Actually, let's call this one science. We'll click okay. And let's add these two here and tap done. Great, so now I have a couple of small groups going and all my students are joining, but I noticed that Chella is actually still offline. And that's because Chella is joining us remotely. One of the things that we wanted to make sure when we created Classroom App for Apple to work in remote settings is that student agency and transparency was really important. We know that remote learning has a lot of different environments going on and a lot of different things happening. So we wanna be sure that when a student joins a classroom session, they're completely aware, they're not caught off guard that they're going to be joining this classroom session. So the way that we do that is one of two ways. The first way that I can do that is by selecting offline in the sidebar navigation, and then the top three dots in the top right, and I can select connect. And what that will do is call all of my offline students um, at the same time. But if I just want to invite a single student into the class, I just tap their monogram and you'll notice for Chella here that I have the option to connect. So I'm going to tap that and I want you to notice what happens in that um, student iPad with the blue background when I do that. You'll notice that there's a ringing happening. She's got a banner. And if she taps that banner notification, it lets her know that her teacher wants her to join this classroom session. All she has to do is tap accept. Easy as that. Joining a classroom remotely, uh, classroom session remotely is as easy as answering a phone call. No complicated things to learn in order to do that. Super um, lightweight, especially if you're working with younger kids. So now you'll see that Chella has joined my class as well. So I have all four of my students here I'm in for my class. I'm ready to get started. And the first thing that I actually want to do is I want them to all work in the same app um, together. So the way that I would do that is by selecting the stack above all students here. And when I do that, I have a list of apps that I can navigate my students to. Um, we've been working on playgrounds, so I'd love for them to work on playgrounds. I'm going to select that. And when I do, you'll notice my student iPads have all navigated. My teacher advice is letting me know that all four iPads have now navigated those students to playgrounds. You'll now notice that the icons have changed with their monograms. They're all in playgrounds. It's a great way, especially if you're doing something where students are working independently and you don't want them to work on something specific, like, um, let's say, independent reading. Uh, and you don't want to pick the book. You want them to pick it. It's a great way to launch that book and have them in there. Um, so... Let's go ahead and then show you one other way that we can do this. Uh, if we want them to work on a specific activity within, app, within an app, all I have to do is tap this little compass icon up at the top above all students, and you'll see that I can navigate students to specific apps in here. Um, so what I can do is select 
books. And then anything that's available to me, I can actually navigate to. Um, rather, I can navigate to. Um, one way that we know folks like to do that is by navigating to specific um, websites in Safari. So one thing that I want to show you is I'm going to pull Safari into side view here. And I already have this website up. I want all of my students to navigate to this specific website. One way that I can do that is by using the share sheet up at the top that I tapped in into Safari and using the airdrop option. And now I can navigate all of my students in homeroom or maybe a couple of my students in my specific small group classes. And so let's go ahead and do that for math. It's sending. And now you'll see that my students are now in that bridge assignment there. Um, I'm going to show you how to do that now with Kahoot as well. So Kahoot's done a really great job of integrating with a uh, classroom and we are able to navigate to specific app, app activities in there. It's been a really great um, experience for teachers, we know. And so I just want to show you in here, um, we've created several cahoots just off of different activities, one of them being the 30 Days of Creativity that we released over the summer, which is a great resource for parents who are trying to engage their students in educational activities. One of my favorites was Finding Shapes in Nature. Um, so if I select that, you'll notice all the different kinds of question types here. So one of the ways that we can navigate students to that is go ahead and again, select share and go to more options. And you can, again, airdrop right in and select homeroom. You'll notice again, all of my students are joining that um, specific Kahoot activity. So rather than open up into one, um, the app itself, it's opening to this specific activity within Kahoot, which is really a great way to get kids focused in where they wanna be. Um, Another thing that I can do is lock my students into this app. So you'll notice I tap the three dots at the top. And if I select lock, it means that I'm locking those students and I'm not going to be able to leave that device. Now you'll notice that one app has failed to lock. And really what that's saying is that Chella, my student who's joining remotely, needs to be in close proximity to me in order to lock. The reason why is again, we know that we have a lot of students who have different circumstances at home when they're learning. And we wanna be sure that they're able to leave their device and exit classroom when it makes the most sense because their schedules might be slightly different. Um, all right, so uh, I'm gonna go ahead and unlock everyone's device so that they can kind of see what's going on and then tap done. Um, you'll notice that their displays are off because I locked their devices. So I'm gonna go ahead and navigate them again back to let's, go ahead and look at a file that we're gonna work on. So we know that files are something that teachers really rely on and make sure that students are doing um, meaningful work within those. And so I wanna make sure that we show you how to do that because getting kids to open the right file is really hard sometimes. So again, I'm gonna pull the file that here open. So you can see I have a file here that I'd like to share with my students. Um, we've all had that struggle of trying to get kids into the right place at the right time. And so you'll see that we have different students um, in, different in different places here. Some are off, so we'll go ahead and allow them to kind of engage in that right now. And what I wanna do is share um, this Exploring Wildlife pages document. So all I have to do is tap and hold. And again, we're using that share again to make sure that we're sending it over to where we need to. So I can do that and airdrop and again, send it to a, the whole group or just some of my small groups. That's one way to do that. Another way that we can actually leverage that is by just dragging and dropping over to the student that you specifically want to have happen. So now you'll notice that Brian's iPad at the bottom has had a request for an airdrop from me. So all he has to do is tap accept on his device and you'll see that now he uh, has that um, pages document opening. So if I wanna make sure that Brian has the right pages document or that he's working in it, um, I can actually view his screen. And the way that I would do that is by, I can, if I wanna look just at Brian's, I can tap Brian and then view screen here. And you'll notice then I'm able to see what's going on. And so if Brian's in here and he's, you know, working away, um, let's say he's asked to kind of annotate his own work, right? He might be highlighting in here, working on stuff, right? And when he's done working on it, um, he can actually submit it back to me. So you're seeing that I can see what Brian's seeing now. I'm just checking in on him. If he needs extra help, I might be able to help navigate without actually having to kind of hover over his shoulders, right? Um, and so uh, if Brian is done, 
he can then go ahead and actually share it back with me. So what I want you to take a look at, above the all students, you'll see this little tray up at the top in gray, and it's grayed out because there's no assignments in here right now. But what I can do is to pay attention as Brian goes to share, he's gonna airdrop it back to me as his teacher. You'll see that I'm available. You'll tap done. And you'll notice then that we have in that inbox a one, which is, means that I have a document waiting for me. So if I tap that, not only do I see who has shared the file, but it's actually appended Brian's name to that uh, document. So now I know, just in case he forgets his name on his document, it's his. And I just have to tap that and it'll launch it open and I'll be able to see his work um, open up in here and any kind of edits he's made. It's a really great light, lightweight way to submit work, no more, you know, handing papers up from the back like we used to back in the day, right? Um, so one last thing is I want to show you how we might take a look at everyone's devices all at once. So if I tap this uh, four circles in the top right, you'll notice that people's devices start to show up to me. And you'll notice that Cellos is still going and you'll see that on her device we have um, a request. It's saying, hey, your teacher wants to view your screen. Are you going to allow or don't allow? Again, it's really important to us that teach students have that agency and transparency of what's happening to their device in that remote setting in particular. So let's go ahead. She's going to say allow here. And now I can see her screen. But these are really tiny, so I just want to see uh, more in detail. So I'm actually going to use pinch to zoom to go ahead and do that. And I can actually enlarge this and see um, exactly what's going on here. And then if I want to look even more in depth, I can go ahead and tap that screen and um, view screen and I'll be able to see more in depth what's going on with Cella. So I tap done and go out of there. You'll notice in this setting here, you can also do various other things. Not only can I view screens, I can disconnect Cella. Um, I can hide all the apps on her device. You'll notice that that just happened there, right? Um, I can reset her password and various other things. If I wanna stop viewing their screens, all I have to do is tap these four squares in the top right. And then we go back to this view again. So that gives us a really great overview of Classroom. One last thing that I do wanna share with you is some of the uh, preferences and settings that we've put in for students, especially when they're joining remotely. So I'm gonna actually make Cella's screen bigger here so that I can show you uh, her settings. So when I open settings and tap to Classroom, you'll notice that um, she's connected here for Homeroom, right? And if I wanna view her screen, Notice what happens. So you'll see this little blue screen pop up that lets her know that her teacher is at it from homeroom is actually viewing her screen. And if she selects this, she's gonna be able to go ahead and disconnect me if she would like, right? Um, which is totally fine because maybe she has to head out for, maybe she has a different schedule. I see all the different classes that she's a part of, right? She can choose to join classes automatically. And then she has the option of allowing teachers to lock apps and devices or airplay and view screen. Airplay is a really great one. When you're um, in a nearby setting, you can airplay students' screens um, so that maybe students can share their work. It's a really great way. Uh, when you tap this, the options are always, so the teacher can always do that, or they must ask every time or never. Again, in a remote setting, teachers will always have to ask because we never know, you know what's going on at home. And then a couple things that are unique to remote attendance. So the first one is the ability to time out. So if a student's device goes to sleep, they can select the times in which their uh, after it goes to sleep that their device would then disconnect for classroom so that they're not a part of the session inadvertently or on accident. And the second one is a fun one. So students, you know, you, know, you heard that ringtone going off. You can also um, select a ringtone that works for you so students can personalize that experience a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and close this guy here so I can show you what happens when we end a session. So if I'm done here and my session is over, I'll tap the more button and then I'll tap end class. And I noticed, and I remember I told you that we give this great class summary. So we're able to show the different apps that were used as well as items that were shared and the students that joined. Great way to see attendance very quickly in a snapshot. You could take a screenshot of this, right? If I want to see any student specific engagement, I could select that student. And not only does it tell me what apps they were engaged with, but for how long. So it's a great way to check in to see which apps or activities they really enjoyed or spent more time with or might have had challenges with. It's a really great snapshot of what's going on in your class at any time. So that covers classroom in a nutshell. Uh, we have um, a few other things we'd like to share as kind of parting 
information. Um, support for teachers. So I just showed you some really great updates to classroom app for, for uh, Apple. And we're more focused than ever, as you can see, on ensuring schools and teachers are supported and using their devices in any environment. And so I also want to talk about our free Apple teacher program, which is enhanced this year to take learning even further. The Apple teacher program delivers free professional learning to educators so they can make the most of Mac and iPad for their students. And when an educator signs up for Apple teacher, they start a self-paced journey through the Apple teacher learning center or ATLC, which has been redesigned to make it even easier for teachers to track where they are with their professional learning. And they start with foundational skills to earn Apple teacher recognition. And now they're gonna be able to integrate those skills into their teaching practice by building an Apple teacher portfolio and in doing so earn an all new level of recognition. A portfolio is designed to help educators build a body of work that showcases their own customized lessons, artifacts and student projects. And we know that um, that we've already heard that this offering really couldn't have come at a better time to motivate teachers and educators around the world who've been experiencing a lot of fatigue from managing remote and hybrid learning environments. So it's a great time to step back and showcase and recognize all of the amazing work that they've been doing every day. All right, so to just wrap up, I'm going to review a few resources available to help you and your organization. And we'll be sharing links to these resources in the chat. So you don't need to worry about like taking screenshots or anything. Um, the first one is around the festival of learning. So beyond all the amazing learning tools in Apple Teacher Learning Center, we're offering educators some other great opportunities to learn and engage with each other this summer. The festival of learning is a week of professional learning opportunities for Apple teachers from July 12th through the 16th. And we'll include Apple teacher meetups, um, a festival of learning playground, and even a book talk. And we'll also do a guided tour of the new Apple Teacher Portfolio Learning Journey. Um, make sure you're signed up in Apple Teacher Learning Center so you can be notified of registration. And also follow us at hashtag Festival of, Lear festival of Learning to connect with their educators, other, other educators during the event. I also want to point out some other resources that might help you with your deployments and transition uh, to using our tools. So we have the Tools for Teaching page, which will have information around Classroom for Apple, as well as schoolwork and other tools that we use um, in the Apple ecosystem. Apple School Manager User Guide and the Education IT page are really great for um, reaching out to your IT admin and getting them what they need to get you started. And lastly, I wanna point out that we have continued resources to support remote learning, as well as the Apple Education Learning Series videos, which were short, really digestible, easy to, to watch videos on, on how to create engaging learning, learning experiences at home. Um, also, remember, I don't know if a lot of people know this, but we have a support line that you can call that's specifically around Apple education. So we're here to support you. Um, if you give this phone number a call, you can get your education answer, uh, questions answered by phone as needed. Apple care professionals will transfer your education cases to folks in the Apple professional learning and Apple professional services where they specialize in education needs. And so please, please, please take advantage of this. We're, we definitely want to be here to support all of your needs. And lastly, please be sure to follow us on Twitter at Apple EDU, where we'll share more about the Festival of Learning content and stories and resources for leaders and teachers throughout the school year. And with that, I want to say thank you for your time and appreciate that you have spent a little bit of that with us and look forward to hearing all of the great stories and plans that you have for the upcoming school year.